I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. It's November, which means you're going to see all kinds of sales and specials all month long. That means a lot of you are going to be bringing home new livestock, and here's how to get your new arrival started on the best fin forward. I'm using the information Laura Simmons from Cans Marine gave me in my acclimation show. If you're looking for the full rundown, including why she acclimates this way, watch that show. The first step in good acclimation is to be home to receive your animals. You don't want the box of coral or fish sitting outside in hot or cold weather. If you're buying livestock from your local fish store, once you've made your purchase, head home immediately. Leaving the bag of fish or coral in a hot or cold vehicle is just as bad as leaving that box of livestock on your doorstep. Once inside, open up the box in a dimly lit room. Now for me, I make my fish room just light enough that I can see what I'm doing, but not so bright that I'm going to light shock the animals in the box. If you've shipped in your animals, they've been in that box anywhere from 12, 18, maybe even 24 hours. And they've been in there used to total darkness. So you open up the box in a, even a moderately lit room, you can light shock them. And light shocking your animals is a horrible way to start their acclimation process. Once I've got the bag containing the animal out of the box, I float it in my sump or my tank for 15 minutes. Note, you still want to make sure the room is dark. So don't float the bag on your display tank lights when your display tank lights are on. Hello, light shock. After 15 minutes, you can either open the bag, roll the top so that it floats in your tank, or gently transfer the contents of the bag into a bucket. Now here's a pro tip for you. If you're bringing in frags or small fish, they're gonna come in a small bag like this with not a lot of water in that bag. Therefore, if you transfer everything in the bag into a five gallon bucket like this, that fish or coral is not gonna be underwater. And you want these animals to be completely submerged the whole time you're acclimating them. Therefore, if you've got frags or small fish, a small one gallon bucket like this is very useful for acclimating them. And once you've got them in the bucket or you've got the bag floating in your tank, it's time to test the water in your display tank and the water in the bag or in the bucket. You're going to test for temperature, pH, and salinity. The easiest way I found to do these tests is with the Hanna Salinity Checker and pH pen. As Laura explained it to me, The lower the slower. That's my theory. The lower the slower. For example, if my display tank or quarantine tank had these parameters and the new animal container had these parameters, your acclimation would take longer because it's going to take more time to get these parameters to match. However, if the parameters were closer together like this, your acclimation will go faster because it's going to take less time to make the parameters match. Note that I'm using the term match loosely. The numbers don't have to match exactly. Just get them close together like this. Once you know where your numbers are, start adding display tank water to the container containing the new animal. You can add it via the cup method, adding one quarter cup every five minutes, or the drip method, which is easier on you as you start the drip rate and let gravity take it from there. A drip rate of several drips a second is fine to start. I'm using the drip acclimation kit from saltwateraquarium.com as it's made for you and it's ready to go. And you can select it as a freebie on orders of $100 or more. After 10 minutes, check your parameters again. This is where the beauty of having the Hanna Salinity Checker and pH pin really comes in. You don't have to rerun a test where you have to count drops or compare color charts. Just place the device in the water and boom, you've got a reading. Now compare the results. The readings from the new animal container should be changing and getting closer to your display tank. If not, increase the rate that you're adding water to the new animal container. Wait 10 minutes and test again. If you need to increase the drip rate or the rate that you're adding the one cup of water to the new specimen container, go for it. Remember you want to see these numbers change and you want them getting closer together. As the numbers get close to one another, you can increase the drip rate or the rate that you're adding the one cup of water. Repeat the wait and test process until the parameters are really close to one another. Here's what really close to one another looks like. Remember, you don't have to match, close is fine. Once your numbers are close, transfer your animals to your display or quarantine tank. For fish, Laura and I both recommend, as she puts it, howdy cages, or as I call them, acclimation boxes. Note that these aren't needed for coral. I let the fish hang out in the acclimation box for several hours. As long as you don't observe any aggression from the existing fish in your display or quarantine tank, release the new specimens into your display or quarantine tank. Pro tip. I like to keep the lights off or turned far down for the first day to encourage my new arrival to settle in. And I found that it makes the existing fish in my display tank chill out to help reduce any aggression. 
For coral, once it's acclimated, I dip the coral and then place it in my display or coral quarantine tank. Proper acclimation is one of the best things that you can do to help your new arrival settle into life with you. Whether you're putting them into your display tank or as low as I recommend, into your quarantine tank first, slow down, take your time, acclimate them properly so that your new arrival gets started with the best fin forward. I'm Mark Callie and Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode. <music>